Hello everyone, this is Joe here with Platinum Reviews, and today we're going to be doing a raw impression of Call of Duty World War II. To start things off, we're going to start off with a story which takes about anywhere from 6 to 8 hours to beat overall. The story takes a different tone of direction in which you no longer rely on technology considering the World War II setting, and you're more relying on your squad for things such as ammo, support to spot enemies, uh, grenades to, to call down mortar strikes, and even med kits which shies away from the whole regenerative health system in the past. The game takes place over key points during World War II, such as D-Day, up to the liberation of Paris, to the Battle of the Rhine, and even Battle of the Bulge. The game had nice varying, varying levels uh, for the game overall, which took place anywhere, like I was saying, D-Day, Battle of the Rhine, stealth missions, which led up to the liberation of Paris, a tank mission, which was your support leader in one mission, and even another mission where you were flying a plane, protecting your bombers, which later became your air support during the Battle of the Bulge. However, that is to say that the levels did not have their pacing faults. A uh, great example of this would be during the first mission, which is during D-Day. One minute you're on the beaches in Normandy, next minute you're in the bunkers taking out a group full of Germans, which felt very pushed to be as fast-paced as it could just to get to the point. The character you play as is Private Daniels, who seemed to be outshined a lot of time by the support any characters such as Sergeant Pearson and his best friend in the game, Zussman. While towards the end of the game, I did feel empathy for Daniels and his squad during the beginning of the game, I just didn't seem to care much about the character because I couldn't connect with him at all. His sporting characters seemed to take the spotlight whenever they were on screen with him versus him getting the spotlight like he should have. It was a nice change of pace, however, to see that the main antagonist of the story wasn't just the German soldiers or the Nazis in the story. It was actually the struggles of fighting World War II alongside your brothers with Pearson and the first lieutenant of your squad always at each other's throats and there being disagreements all around, which would have seemed to be very natural during that time and during that high tense situation. Overall for the story, it was nicely paced most of the time and the characters were somewhat relatable, at least towards the end of the story. It's not a story that I would exactly write home about, but it is a story I would go back and visit again just for achievements and maybe just to, you know, have some fun with it if I couldn't find anything else to play at the time. Now on to the multiplayer. This is where the World War II really shines and shows its boots on the ground gameplay. The multiplayer overall had 10 maps, unless you decided to pick up the season pass along with the game, then it had 11. The maps did feel nice and varied here and there, however some of them did feel like clones and others just felt too big or too small for certain game modes. Overall I had a lot of fun with the multiplayer, gun balance felt really nicely in this game and no guns felt like they were overpowered. Uh, however, the gun classes that did feel like they were going to dominate the most with this game would be the assault rifles and the SMGs, which is usually with every COD game. Overall, the multiplayer modes such as team deathmatch, kill confirm, search and destroy, hardpoint, and domination. However, as noted, sometimes those game modes didn't feel right with certain of the maps, some of the maps feeling too small for them, such as Domination on certain maps, and sometimes too big, such as with Domination again, or Hardpoint. However, the new game mode War was a nice change of pace to things, especially coming from like Team Deathmatch or Domination. The biggest change to the multiplayer overall would be removing the creative class system and introducing the new division system that Call of Duty World War II has. This new division system was a nice change of pace and better fits your playstyle depending on what kind of playstyle you have. And just like every other game in today's day and age, it does have loot boxes. However, these loot boxes never really felt forced and I didn't even really find where to buy them until I was 8 hours into the multiplayer. The loot boxes for the most part only contain cosmetic items for now and that could change in the future, but they're not forced at all and never really needed to buy any. Overall, the multiplayer is a fun experience and it's nice to see boots on the ground multiplayer for this game. I did enjoy my time in it and I am enjoying my time in it so far. However, server troubles have been keeping me down and keeping me from playing the multiplayer. Considering headquarters, social space is pretty empty right now and it's hard to connect with my friends to play. Now on to the zombies. The zombies is new, refreshed, and better than ever. It feels creepier, looks creepier, and can be generally scary at times. It's still just as mysterious as previous zombies game before it, and what's nice is it actually has missions to give you some direction so you're just not walking around aimlessly killing zombies, especially if you're not an easter egg person like myself. However, like I said, that isn't to say the game still isn't mysterious. It still has plenty of easter eggs and things for you to find in the game itself while you're slaying many zombies. However, at times the zombies mode 
it did kind of feel a little easy, especially with how many perks you can get and the fact that it felt pretty easily to slay most zombies unless you got into the later rounds, which would be like 25 plus. The biggest change to the zombies overall is probably their spawn system. The spawn system felt really random and I didn't feel safe at any point while facing zombies in front of me because I knew zombies even behind me could spawn. The zombies overall is a great fun experience and it still provides mystery and plenty of easter eggs for those people out there always looking for easter eggs. In general, this game looks great and feels great. The CGI cinematics are beautiful to behold and the scenery overall is great to look at while you're not killing many Nazis in the campaign or in the multiplayer. The sound design overall for the game is fantastic. Everything had a unique sound and felt very nitty and gritty like this game likes to play off. However, sometimes the sound did glitch and sometimes I would get no sound or other times I would get one specific sound played very loudly and it did cause me some problems here and there. Overall, it didn't happen too many times but it was enough to where it needed to be noted. While onto the gameplay, it did feel very balanced in the multiplayer and it, overall it feels nice. It's a nice Call of Duty and it's much to what you expect if you're a fan of games like Modern Warfare or World at War. And to wrap things up, the pros of this game would be it sounds great, looks great, and it plays great. Like I said, if you're a fan of World at War or even Modern Warfare, you'll probably enjoy this game. However, that is to say that this game did not have its faults. The story wasn't as memorable as I'd like it to be. The multiplayer maps were too big or too small at times depending on the game mode. And, of course, it did need more game modes overall, even though War was a great introduction to this game. Overall, this game is fantastic to play, looks great, feels great, and it's nice to be back with the boots on the ground uh, multiplayer and gameplay overall. If you enjoy games such as Modern Warfare or World at War, you'll enjoy this game. For me, this game is a definite buy, especially if you're a fan of the Call of Duty franchise. However, if you're somebody that's not a Call of Duty person and more of a Battlefield person, you might just want to rent this game and try it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this Platinum review, and be sure to like the video if you did enjoy this review, and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more content. I hope you guys enjoyed my first review, and hopefully you guys will see me around later.